Okay, so let's talk about the logistics of our course. So hopefully you can see uh, on your screen the course syllabus. And actually, let me talk about this really quickly. So I did post a course syllabus <clears throat> uh, recently to the uh, ASU, I guess you could call it course schedule. Um, so that, you know, those that wanted to get access to it ahead of time and just kind of see in general, what the, what to expect from the course and, you know, textbook and assignments and that kind of thing, you know, could access it. Uh, I have made a few kind of minor changes. Uh, and then, so basically uh, what, what you're seeing here is the most updated version, uh, most recent version of the course syllabus that's available on the Canvas page. And actually, let me uh, display the Canvas page on the screen here. So when you go to Canvas and click on the course, um, this I have it on student view as opposed to instructor view. So this is what you should see. So this should be uh, from your vantage point, the course homepage. So actually, uh, when you go to the course homepage, the first thing you could do is click on syllabus. And uh, this is how you access the syllabus, the, the most you know updated, most recent version of the syllabus for this course that I'm going to be going through uh, right now specifically. So, and of course it's not loading or maybe just loading very slowly. Okay, uh, yeah. So here, that's the, the course syllabus. So yeah, I mean, I, I would say that's that's kind of the first thing, access the course syllabus via the, the Canvas page, and we'll come back to the Canvas page <laughs> uh, over the course of the next few minutes here. Okay, so again, the course is uh, History 110, U.S. History since 1865. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, it's a six-week online course. Uh, this is session B. Um, so our, our course officially starts June 29th and officially ends uh, August 9th. And yeah, so it's it's going to be a quick uh, a quick hitter. Um, uh, uh, and I'll I'll talk more uh, more about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot in in a relatively short amount of time. So uh, let's see. Yeah, so I put my email on here. Um, uh, so yeah, if you need to email me, actually, I'm going to talk more about when to email me, when not to email me a little bit later. But yeah, that's my my email, dschloss at asu.edu. Uh, office hours. Yeah, I, <clears throat> by the way, so I'm in my quote unquote office. Uh, we have shared graduate student graduate student offices that are like shared spaces. That's the uh, sort of bunker <laughs> that I'm that I'm in right now on the ASU Tempe uh, campus where I'm recording this, this video. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, so it, if you wanted to like talk to me, probably Zoom would be the best way to go and we could set up a Zoom meeting, uh, you know, or you could just email me. Uh, so <clears throat> yeah, so you could read the course description on your own. And why I'm teaching this class, you could read that on your own as well. I think you might find that interesting. And course objectives as well. I, I mentioned, uh, I think, a, a couple of these in the first video. Uh, but you can read through that uh, and encourage you to, to read through the course objectives. Let's get to the course textbook. So the um, the course textbook is Give Me Liberty, Siegel 7th Edition, Volume 2. Uh, there might be a few of you guys that were in my... Um, class my um summer 2023 uh session a history 109 class which is u.s history to 1865 again this is u.s history since 1865 so i just got done teaching or i'm, I'm just finishing up basically uh teaching uh the first half of u.s history uh in in a six-week course so there might be a few of you that are taking both courses um if that's the case then i apologize you know it's a little um confusing you would think that i would just stick with the mcclay book uh, that i used for uh the history 109 course but i'm actually switching to give me liberty for all my courses uh, and there's like different reasons for that but you know from <clears throat> uh from a student's perspective i think it's a really good textbook <laughs> uh, I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, and actually, we'll, yeah, so we'll talk about how to, um, 
how to access this textbook right now. So again, it's Give Me Liberty is the title of the textbook, Siegel, 7th edition, volume two, which is the second half of U.S. history. And let's read through, uh, let me go ahead and read through um, what it says uh, below uh, below that. The required material for this course, Give Me Liberty, uh, will be provisioned as an ebook and made available at a discounted price, significantly cheaper than if purchased directly from the publisher. Uh, if you wish to take advantage of the discounted group price, no additional action is needed. Following the drop ad period, a charge of thirty five fifty plus tax will be posted. Uh, will post to your student account under the heading Digital Integrated Course MTRL. Uh, material, basically, and your access will continue uninterrupted. Uh, if, however, you'd rather purchase the material from, from an alternate source, you may choose to opt out of the program by using this link. Uh, you can see the link there. Um, so basically, you enter your ASU email address as it appears in the ASU directory, uh, then follow the instructions provided. Be aware that if you do not opt out, your access to the ebook will be discontinued. Um, to access the content, uh, or sorry, if uh, be aware that if you do opt out, big difference, uh, your access to the ebook will be discontinued. Uh, to access the con content, click on the Norton ebook link in your Canvas module, uh, which I'll show you in a second here. Uh, please note the ebook won't appear on your shelf until approximately five days prior to the start of the class. If you need assistance accessing the book or the opt out portal, uh, fill out the support request form, and you can see the form there. Um, and there's another book that you guys need to access, which I'll get to in a second. Um, let's talk more about this course textbook. So um, <clears throat> basically, uh, I would highly recommend that you guys just access the course textbook via Canvas. Uh, but again, you don't have to. Um, so uh, you can get this, um, get the ebook version of this directly from the publisher. Um which is uh, WW Norton. So if you wanted to do that, you know, feel free to do that. But again, you would have to um, facilitate the the opt out uh, process. Um, and I believe if you want to get a hard copy uh, of this, uh, I believe you. I, I know that's definitely available, you know, in places like like Amazon. But make sure if you're going to do that, it's Give Me Liberty again, C Siegel um, Seventh Edition Volume Two. Uh, so make sure it's not not like sixth edition or fifth edition. Make sure it's volume two as opposed to volume one uh, of this, you know, uh, give me liberty uh, textbook. Um, I talked to the university bookstore and they said that I, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, they said that they were going to make hard copies of this book, some some hard copies of the book available. Um, so if, if you're here in you know the Phoenix area and you wanted to come in and, and grab one, uh, I think you could do that. But I, I would probably call first and make sure. Uh, or check on the website and make sure they're available. Um, and again, you'd want to, in that case, initiate the opt-out process as soon as possible. Um, so you wouldn't have to, unless you want to, uh, so you wouldn't have to pay 35, you know, 50 for the ebook and then have a hard copy and maybe, you know, you know be wasting your money. But they said they were going to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, have a certain number of, of hard copies of, of this, you know, Siegel 7th edition, uh, volume two version of the Give Me Liberty textbook. So if you wanted to, to go for that, you know, feel free. Uh, you don't have to use the ebook. Um, all of the page numbers that are listed uh, on the course syllabus and on the Canvas page uh, for the reading assignment should be the same, whether you're using the ebook or the hard copy. Uh, so again, really, it's up to you. But again, I, you know, uh, I would recommend using the ebook. I think that's going to be easier, and you get access to certain things with the ebook that you don't get with um, the hard copy. So again, this is the course Canvas page uh, homepage, and if you go to modules, this is how you would actually access the ebook. So actually, the first thing you want to do before accessing the ebook is it says click here first to access Give Me Liberty. So basically you click on that and they, I won't do this right now, but essentially um, they just have you uh, fill out, um, uh, you, you have to agree to certain terms or, or something. Uh, so you would just go ahead and do that and then you could access the ebook. So uh, the way I have the, the course set up is in seven different modules, which I'll talk more about in, in a few minutes. You could see module one, module two, populism, progressive, progressivism, imperialism, module three, World War One in the 1920s. Um, so on and so forth. By the way, um, basically there's six content modules. Um, we're going to end our quote unquote content modules with the 60s 
the conservative ascendancy and hyperglobalization, which is module six. Uh, that's the end of the reading assignments, the primary source uh, questions assignments, et cetera. And then module seven is all about the final paper, um, which I'll get to a little bit later as well. But going back to module one, so you can see basically it says Norton Illumini ebook chapter 15. So you would click on this, and this is the ebook. Yeah, this is basically the ebook. So um, I think the way they have this laid out is is just very user friendly. Uh, I think it's a very good textbook. Um, let's see. Oh, it, yeah. Sorry, they've uh, the way I have this set up with the share screen. It's kind of it's cutting off part of. Uh, part of the questions here. But um, yeah, so that's one one benefit of this is they have review questions for like each little section, basically check for understanding questions, right? So you can, um, you can do those, um, you could ignore those if you want. It's not like you have to get get through those. Um, uh, they're not the, like the troll guarding the bridge to get to the next, you know, section of the textbook. But you can do these and see if you know, so it's asking you, what does the term reconstruction mean? You can see if you have a good understanding of that uh, from what you just read. And if you get the wrong answer, maybe you want to go back and, and read it again, go back and review. But anyway, um, so then you go to the next section and you could see uh, this has, you know, just text content um, and uh, um, some nice uh, some nice visuals to go uh, along with it, which you would get in the hard copy of the textbook as well. Uh, it also has this. Let me just click on this. You can hear that. Well, African-Americans brought out of slavery complex ideas about freedom. Slaves think about freedom a great deal. They, they didn't come out ignorant of freedom or without any ideas about freedom. Yeah, so that's Eric Foner. Um, I I, uh, I actually have no idea. Um, <laughs> I'm not very technologically savvy, so I have no idea if you guys could actually hear that. Uh, but I guess I'll find out when I re rewatch this. Uh, but basically, that's Eric Foner. He's one of the editors, um, uh, one of the people who created this this great um, textbook. Um, and he's one of the most famous um, uh, American historians, Americanist historians, uh, basically experts in, in American history. Uh, and yeah, he's he's still still alive, still writing textbooks and uh, and and other books and contributing to the historical profession. And he not only helped write this textbook and edit it, he um, contributed a lot of videos. Um, these are typically short videos. So again, these aren't like required, but uh, if you wanted to access these, you you would only get access to these via the ebook, right? So <clears throat> yeah, that's basically the ebook. Uh, let me go back to back to the canvas page here and actually yeah let's go back to sorry the let's go back to the syllabus so again it's up to you um uh again if you don't want access to the ebook uh, if you want to go another route uh you know uh going directly through the publisher amazon the university bookstore to get a hard copy as opposed to an ebook again that's up to you but you would have to um opt out via this form that i listed on on the syllabus so just a heads up on that Okay, another required book is this this book. Um, you'll see at the bottom of your screen, Lisa McGurr's Suburban Warriors, The Origins of the New American Right. Uh, this was published in 2002. And it says, note, this book is available for free as an ebook via the ASU's li ASU Libraries uh, One Search System. Yeah, so you're going to use this book to help write uh, in addition to my lecture videos, which I'll talk about, in addition to the textbook. Uh, and uh, in addition, probably to primary primary source documents as well, you're going to put all those things together to help you write your final paper. Um, and, and let me talk about how to access this book. I, I would highly recommend not, I mean, again, if you want to buy this book, you're free to, to do that. It's available on Amazon um, and I'm sure in, in other uh in other uh, uh, websites, uh, in other places on, on the internet, uh, bookstores on the internet. Uh, but I would highly recommend just accessing this via the ASU library. If you don't really have experience with that, let me kind of guide you through that the best I can. Let's see, I actually have to move this. Can I move this? Yes, okay. So just give me one second here. 
So I, uh, so this is the ASU, maybe I'll just put this up a little bit. So you could say I went to lib.asu.edu, that's the ASU library. Now, if I type in um, Suburban Warriors, <clears throat> you could just type in basically Suburban Warriors, Lisa McGurr. So this is in the ASU One Search, the ASU One Search, actually, there we go. And uh, it's a little confusing. You'd see there's like book reviews. If you wanted to check those out, you could do that. <clears throat> um, by the way, to access OneSearch, if you don't have experience with this, um, you're going to have to sign in, which uh, I actually have to sign in here. Yeah, so it signed me in automatically. Uh, you might have to, basically, you have to put in your um, username um, uh, and password. Uh, I, I think it's the same as your my.asu username and passwords. So you want to kind of work that out in advance, figure out what that is. But anyway... This is where you can actually access the book uh, for free. So here, uh, Suburban Warriors, The Origins of the New Right. This is the second entry that came up when I just typed in the name of the author and, and the title. And it says full text available. And basically you can access it. I, I would recommend clicking on a, uh, ACLS Humanities eBook. Okay, and read book. Yeah, and there you go. So that's essentially how you would access this book. You could see they have, um, yeah, so I could start with the introduction. Uh, it's very easy to, to navigate through. So if you don't have experience with the ASU library and eBooks, um, this should be fairly straightforward. And again, you can access uh, this book for free as an eBook. So I would highly recommend doing that. Okay, so let's see, let's go back to the syllabus. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So great uh, grading info. So this is a, a breakdown of uh, you know, the assignments and the percentages of your grade uh, that each assignment, um, each set of assignment makes up. Uh, so the the um the core there's a thousand points total in this course. Um uh, doing it that way just makes it easier on me to convert points to, you know, percentage, uh, percentage of your grade. So basically reading slash lecture quizzes, which I'll talk about in a second, those are um, about half of your grade. Those add up to 48% or 480 points in total. You're going to have six of those corresponding to the first six modules um, of the course. And each of those is 80 points. You also have primary source questions. You're going to have, again, six of those corresponding to the first six modules of the course. And each of those uh, are worth, if you think about the math on that, 30 points. Um, and that adds up to a total at 18% of your grade. Then you have your final essay, which is a big, um, uh, really big fish here, a big kahuna, right? So final essay is 340 points or 34%, a little over a third of your grade. And that adds up to a total of 100% and 1,000 points. Uh, so let's talk about, yeah, let me talk about reading slash lecture quizzes and primary source questions. Okay, so yeah, I, I think uh, what I said for reading slash lecture quizzes and primary source questions like on the syllabus, you guys can read that on your own. But um, uh, let me, uh, I think for our purposes here, uh, I wanna go right back to the Canvas page. Just give me a second here. Okay. So uh, if you go to the Canvas page, here's the homepage. If you, if you click on modules, this is where you can access most everything. So the best way to access, most straightforward way to access most everything is, is through modules. And um, so let's take a look at, well, first of all, <clears throat> um, the best way to keep track of what's due every week um, and even like what's due in the long term is outline. So I start off each module with an outline. So this is outline for module one. Um, so the first thing you want to do uh, for, you know, for the first uh, module. And, and actually, let me talk about this really quickly. So it's a little confusing, but there's um, seven modules in the course. Um, and this is a six-week course. 
So if you think about it, that means that it's a new module every six days. Um, I think there's like positives and negatives to doing it that way. Um, you know, I think in a perfect uh, in a perfect world, I would be able to set up the assignments the way I wanted to set up the assignments and uh, kind of move the class along in terms of con content continuity uh, and do all that with a new module every week. Uh, that's just... Um, I, I found that that's too difficult to do, and it just worked out much better to have seven modules, even though it's a six-week course, in terms of content continuity um, for each individual module. Uh, and so, anyway, I you know I apologize for if that's confusing for people, but again, keep in mind that the modules don't turn over every week; they turn over every six days. Um, so you know, it's uh, you know. Assignments are due on a Sunday once, and then uh, and then after that it's a Saturday, and then uh, for the next module it's a Friday or whatever, right? It's gonna it's gonna change uh, with each module. Uh, but anyway, you can take a look at the outline, and basically it says read "Give Me Liberty" chapter fifteen all, uh, and then chapter sixteen you don't, you don't have to read all. It's uh, pages six twenty seven to six forty nine. Uh, for chapter 16. Uh, also, you want to watch the module one lecture videos, uh, which I'll talk about talk about more in a second. Complete the module one reading slash lecture quiz that corresponds with the textbook readings and the lecture videos. And also complete the module one primary source questions. And all of that is going to be due uh, July 4th, uh, end of the day, July 4th. And actually, that's another negative uh, of the way I've set this up. Uh, so I apologize for making everything due on July 4th. Uh, I would, you know, if I were you, I would just have every Everything, you know, get everything done, hopefully July 3rd, take the day off on July 4th, and then pick things up on, on July 5th. Uh, you know, enjoy, uh, and enjoy your, you know, summer holiday if you, if you can. Um, but, you know, in terms of continuity of the course, um, you know, each module is six days long. Actually, I should mention that module seven is essentially five days long. Um, uh, but each other, uh, each of the first six modules, uh, which are the main content modules are going to be six days long. Uh, and then after that, you have five days to complete, uh, the final paper. Although probably you want to start working on the fine. Definitely. You want to start reading, uh, the McGurr book and probably you want to start working on the final paper in, in terms of writing the final paper, uh, before, um, uh, at least like outlining before the start of that last module. And then the final paper is due uh, August 8th, uh, end of the day. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, I would recommend looking at the outline to see what the assignments are, uh, you know, for each module, when, the, uh, when everything is due and to kind of keep all your ducks in a row. Uh, again, you can access um, the... Uh, the ebook, uh, each individual chapter that's assigned uh, for that module uh, for the ebook, if you're using the ebook uh, within the context of each module. So you can see that here. Uh, I'll get to the lecture video in a second. Or actually, maybe I'll, I'll just go ahead and talk about that right now. So yeah, I have lecture videos for module one, for module two. Those are posted right now. I haven't completed the ones for module five and module six, but I am going to complete those in the next couple of weeks. So uh, keep that in mind. Module five and module uh, six aren't complete yet. And actually, if you go down to module five, um, you can look at the outline, like everything that's going to be due. But if you'll notice, uh, I don't have a module five reading slash lecture quiz posted yet. And the reading, uh, the reason for that is, so I do have questions ready to go for the reading quiz, um, uh, the quiz for uh, uh, the, the part that quizzes you in the textbook. Um, but I haven't completed the lecture yet. Uh, so after I complete complete the lecture, I'm going to come up with a few lecture video questions. I'll put that all together, and then I'll post the reading slash lecture quiz for module five. Uh, I'm going to do a, a video for module six, uh, which is an especially important video because that relates to the conservative ascendancy, and conservative ascendancy is a part of your final, an important part of your, your final paper. Um, <clears throat> and so... Uh, after I complete that video, again, I'll come up with the lecture video questions, put those together with the reading questions, the textbook reading questions, and then post, uh, I'll post reading slash lecture quiz six, um, you know, coming up here in the next, you know, week or two. So look out for that. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, to, ac uh, to access the lecture videos, basically, you just do that here. So this is lecture video one. 
Yeah, so this is linked basically to YouTube. All right, hey everybody. Uh, so in this video, so yeah, so that's how you access the the lecture videos. That's pretty straightforward. Let me take a look at, or let me show you the reading slash lecture quizzes. So this is a major aspect of this class. Again, it's uh, you add all these up, these six assignments uh, come out to a little bit less than fifty percent of your grade. So what do these assignments look like? Well. So basically, let's go to take the quiz. So um, each, of, excuse me, uh, I believe each of these assignments is 34 questions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think each of these is 34 questions or thereabouts. Um, and the way I ended up doing this was um, these are all multiple choice, or sorry, 30, uh, about 30 of these are multiple choice. I know that's the case on this first one. And then I have four that are essay. Um, essay questions, although maybe that's a little bit of a misnomer. Really, they're like short answer questions. Um, so you're not just picking an answer, you're writing. Um, there's not, uh, so a couple of things about this. Um, so we're going to complete this um, just on the Canvas page and turn it in, uh, you know, uh, before the due date. Um, so you could see, uh, actually, let me just move this over. Uh, you can see it says attempt due July 4th at 1159 p.m. So you have until, well, basically when it's due, July 4th, 1159 p.m. to turn this in. Uh, a couple of things about this. So um, this is not a time test. Uh, so you can, you know, do the whole thing in an hour. You It could take you uh, a few days to do the whole thing. Um, so let's say, you know, um, you know, so let's say that's my answer for number one. This is my answer for number two. This is my answer for number three. And uh, number four, I think, is this answer. Uh, number five, et cetera. And you know what? I have uh, something else that comes up. Uh, and so um, uh, I'm going to come back to my plan is to come back to this later. So I'm going to say leave. And yeah, so let's say I, so now, you know, a day later, I want to come back to it. Uh, you should be able to come back to um, the quiz with your progress saved. So see how it says resume quiz? Yeah, and now it has my answers. By the way, I'm not saying these are the are the correct answers. Uh, I just kind of randomly picked an answer. That's up to you to figure out the answers. But yeah, so this quiz is open book, open notes, uh, totally take your time on this. Um, and these are all multiple choice. Uh, I think some of these are harder than, than others. Uh, but again, you have access to, to your textbook. Um, and I have, um, these should, by the way, should mostly be in order. Um, so these should correspond to the actual, what I've actually assigned you to read, um, the chapters and specific aspects of, of chapters, page numbers within the context of the, uh, context of those chapters that I've actually assigned you to read. Um, and they should basically go in order. So that should help you get through these more quickly. So again, uh, most of these are multiple choice now, um, uh, question 19, you can see this is five points as opposed to two points. Every multiple choice question is two points. And let's read this. Was reconstruction a success or a failure? Or was it somewhere in between? In response, consider, and I give you some things to consider. Uh, and uh, I go on to say, also, be um, be sure to make clear what you mean by success or failure. Um, and so this is a, a short answer question that's dealing just with um, information presented in your textbook. So keep that in mind. Um, for the weeks that um, there's videos, and by the way, there's not gonna be my lecture videos. I'm not gonna post lecture videos for, uh, you don't have to worry about lecture videos, no lecture videos for uh, module three and module four. I am still calling those reading slash lecture quizzes. Um, well, reading slash lecture quizzes. Those are really just reading quizzes if you think about it, because I'm not, there's no lecture uh, aspect of it. Uh, but anyway, for those uh, weeks that we do have lectures, um, lecture videos posted, uh, which is going to be module one, module two, module five, and module six, um, you, you're going to have, uh, I believe, three questions. Those questions are going to come at the end, and I'm going to label those reading, uh, sorry, lecture video questions. And so you can see uh, here, question 32, that's a lecture video question. Explain how railroads helped enable the second industrial revolution. Um, that's, yeah, so you want to watch my video? I talk about that. And that's going to help you answer that question. You can see question 33 and question 34 are lecture video questions. 
So um, how do you want to approach these? Uh, let me talk about that really, uh, talk about this really quickly. So the main thing is to give uh, as total of, and, and complete of an answer to the question as you possibly can uh, and communicate things as clearly, communicate what you're trying to say, demonstrate knowledge of whether it's you know lecture video or uh, a textbook, demonstrate knowledge of what's being presented uh, the best you can. Uh, you know, in the clearest, concise, most, you know, most uh, in the clearest and most concise way, um, most intelligible way, uh, and be as specific as you can answer all parts of the question, right? So what does that mean in terms of like, or, you know, do I have like a minimum number of sentences? I'm not going to give you a minimum number of sentences or a maximum number of sentences even. Um, I would say in general, uh, it's going to be hard to get five points uh, for most of these in less than probably four sentences. Um, so I would say shoot for four sentences. In some cases, you're going to want to give me more than four sentences. You know, I, I would say uh, depends on the question, right? Explain how railroads helped enable the second industrial revolution. I think four sentences could answer this question. For some people, it might take five, six, seven sentences. Um, I would say for this question, number 19, was reconstruction a success or failure? And then I give you some things to talk about and you know make clear what you mean by success or failure. This is uh, a, a pretty like involved, you know, broad, multifaceted question. Um, so maybe you want to go over four sentences, but I'm judging like, have you answered all parts of the question? Uh, are you have you sufficiently demonstrated to me that you read the textbook, that you watch my lecture carefully, um, et cetera? Um, so yeah, basically that's, that's the idea. Um, so you want to get those in before the due date. Again, you can, you know, it saves your progress automatically. Um, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward and, and user-friendly for you. Let me talk about the, okay, so back to the homepage, or actually, let me go back to modules. Let me talk about the primary source questions assignments. So I'll go to module four, actually, primary source questions. So I think this is like pretty self-explanatory. Um, so it gives you the link, uh, and these are the primary source documents all, uh, that you're going to use. And um, I'll, I'll click on that in a second. Let me read this. It says, please download the attached file, read through the primary source documents, and answer the questions that correspond with the primary source documents. And I give you the numbers. Numbers 146, uh, 150, 156, and 161, at least for 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 the specific primary source questions assignment. Uh, and then I give you a specific format to follow. Please follow this format. Uh, and the idea is that you're going to create basically a docx file. So you could just open up, you know, micro, Microsoft Word or whatever um, word processing software you have, create a docx file, um, type in your name, uh, and essentially use, I'll, I'll go ahead and highlight this, use this format. So you want to um, save the, basically save the um, uh, list, the document title, list the, the title of the document, uh, which you'll see once you actually click on this uh, PDF of, of the documents. And then just give me your answer to number one and give me your answer to number two. At the end of each of these documents that you're assigned, they give you, they always give you two questions. Um, you don't need to write the question down. Just give me the answers. I know what the questions are. I have access to the questions. So just answer the questions um, and uh, then go to the next document, write the document number. So, you know, number 146, number 150, give me the title. Give me your answers. Um, and I think, uh, uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so you can read this on your own, but uh, the idea is you want to give me about two to four sentences for each of these. Um uh, so you probably don't have to write as much in general on these uh, as you do for the short answer questions that are a part of the reading slash lecture uh, quizzes. Uh, but you want to still answer all parts of the question, demonstrate knowledge and, and in critical engagement with the primary sources. And you can see the primary source questions rubric, like what's going to get you full credit for a certain question, what's going to get you half credit, and what's not going to get you any credit. So you can... Uh, I'll leave it to you to, to take a look at that. So if we click on this, then we can see. Yeah, so for, for this one, the first document is uh, number 146, Letter to Secretary of Labor Francis Perkins, 1937. 
Um, these are all going to start with uh, a synopsis. By the way, these were all taken. Um, and then let me talk about this a little bit. So all of these primary source documents are taken from another Eric Foner book, which is, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, I think it's, yeah, so it's also called Give Me Liberty, but it's a, a, a Give Me Liberty, a collection of primary documents or something like that. Uh, if you guys wanted to get access to that book on your own, you could do that. Uh, but what I'm trying to do here, um, uh, what, what, I, what I ended up doing was, because I'm already making you guys buy the textbook, I didn't want to make you buy another book, right? So I'm working for you uh, the best I can, uh, trying to get you, uh, put you guys in a position to save money. So essentially, I had access to all these documents. And so I copied the uh, on my computer. And so I essentially just took a picture of my computer. This was the only way I could do it because they won't let you, the textbook publisher won't let me, wouldn't let me copy and paste them. Uh, it was a whole thing. So so I ended up taking a picture on my computer uh, and then I had to compile these. It took like many, many hours. But again, the idea was to save you guys money. Uh, so hopefully you appreciate that. Um, but that's also an explanation for why if it looks like somebody took a picture of a computer and it's in a very sort of fuzzy, funky format. Again, I apologize for that, but you should be able to see these documents. Uh, see these questions. But each of these documents starts off with a synopsis that was written, I, I think, by Foner that gives you sort of background and context. I would highly recommend reading that. Um, so you could see the election of FDR as president in uh, 1932 did much to uh, rekindle hope, et cetera, et cetera. So then it gets to the actual um, document. Dear Miss Perkins, I'm writing to you because I think you are pretty square to the average laboring man. But I'm wondering, and so it goes on, document goes on here and you can see at the end of the document is two or two questions why does the writer feel uh that secretary of labor perkins will give uh, the letter a sympathetic reading that's number one number two why does the writer refer to our so uh our so-called free america so those are the questions you're going to answer then go to the next document herbert hoover on the new deal and liberty and so on and so forth so that's the idea for the primary source questions um Okay, so those are, um, that's kind of the meat and potatoes of the course, right? <laughs> that's what you're going to be doing each, at the end of each uh, six-day cycle, each module, you're going to uh, complete, um, have completed a reading slash lecture quiz and a primary source documents assignment, primary source questions assignment. Um, and that makes up, you know, basically two-thirds of your grade. By the way, primary source questions, I'm going to go back to the um, syllabus here. It says, let me just read this. Um, excuse me. So primary sources, uh, FYI, primary sources are original documents recorded by people who live through and experience a particular time period. Primary documents are the most important sources considered by historians when interpreting and analyzing the past. They are immediate firsthand accounts from people who had a direct connection to the period or event under study. Primary sources include diaries, letters, newspaper editorials, pamphlets, speeches, government records, et cetera. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Yeah, so... Uh, historians, uh, you know, so if you're a biologist or, a, you know, especially like a, uh, a chemist or something, uh, you would do a lot of work in a lab, most likely. Um, you would you would uh, conduct experiments. Uh, we can't really do that with history, right? Um, so the way we get evidence is through primary documents, right? So you guys are going to, uh, in a rudimentary way, get some familiarity with primary documents, work with primary documents, Try and analyze primary documents to get a better sense of the perspective, uh, kind of like I talked about in the first video, uh, the perspective of get a better understanding of the perspective of people who live during these time periods and contributed to these political and economic and social uh, debates uh, and, and controversies. Um, okay. Okay, so we talked about... Um, <clears throat> I talked about reading lecture, reading slash lecture quizzes. I talked about primary source questions. Um, yeah, I'll probably talk about the final essay in a second here. Um, you could see the course schedule is listed on here. This should correspond to the outline for each individual uh, module that's listed on, on Canvas. So these should fit together. Um, by the way, if there's any discrepancy between the syllabus and what it says on Canvas, uh, if you, by the way, especially if you get to like uh, questions and the reading lecture quiz that are, are from a portion 
of the textbook that you weren't actually assigned to read, um, please let me know. Uh, I am uh, I'm not a perfect person like everybody else. I make mistakes, so I'm happy to correct those those mistakes. Like more than anything, I want to know if there's a discrepancy or a problem ASA, ASAP. So please just uh, let me know. But anyway, this basically lays out the modules, lays out the reading assignments, lets you know when everything is due, and that's the same thing with the outline on Canvas. Um, yeah, why don't we talk about the final paper really quickly? Okay, so final essay, final paper, you can see on your screen here. Um, students will construct an analytical essay either explaining the rise of conservatism in the late 20th century or exploring the character of American populism. Regardless of which op uh, option you choose, you will make use of the te textbook readings, primary source documents, my lectures, and the book Suburban Warriors by Lisa McGurr to construct a cogent and convincing response to the prompt. So that's the idea. The essay is going to be a five-page essay. Um, and it's due, if you see at the very uh, bottom of the course schedule here, the essay is due um, on to Canvas at the end of August, uh, the day of August 8th. <laughs> the course technically ends on August 9th. Um, I kind of went back and forth on this. Uh, it's I think it's going to be better to have our last assignment due on August 8th. Um, uh, there, I think is going to be an opportunity to make, uh, to turn it, if you need to turn this in late, uh, if there's extenuating circumstances, I think there will be an opportunity to do that, to turn it in on, uh, on August 9th, but that's going to be with a late penalty of probably two letter grades. So just a heads, a heads up on that. Um, the point is that I need these, uh, in, so I have time to grade these, um, in a, in, in, in efficient, but also fair manner. You guys are going to spend a lot of time on these, thinking and writing and, you know, preparing and uh, editing, uh, hopefully. Uh, and so I want to give these the proper consideration. Uh, these are a big part of your grade. Uh, and so, I, you know, I need a few days to um, to go through these um, and to, to score these and give some feedback and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then the grades are due pretty pretty much right away. And then you guys have to move on and I have to move on uh, to new things. So that that's kind of the um, that's kind of the idea. Um, so uh, with this final essay, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what I wanted to talk about right now. So <clears throat> um, this final essay is basically dealing in large part with the conservative ascendancy of the late 20th century. And that's what the supplementary reading assignment, um, the Lisa McGurr book, uh, Suburban Warriors is is dealing with, um, is gonna shed light on. So that's, that's part of the reason why I've set this class up the way that I have. Um, because like a big part of writing, let me mention this. So a big part of writing this paper, it's not all that's gonna go into this paper, um, but a big part of writing this paper is gonna be what's discussed, um, uh, what's presented in uh, textbook readings for module six, and especially what I talk about in my lecture for module six. Uh, and obviously we're not gonna get to that until uh, July 29th, right? So um, uh, I think you wanna, for the most part, wait uh, to um, uh, wait to really start putting this paper together until you learn about the conservative conservative ascendancy within the context of the textbook reading, within the context of my lectures, right? Um, and but while you're doing that, you can um, uh, and even before you know we get to um, July 29th and, and module six, uh, you can start reading Lisa McGurr's. Uh, suburban warriors i would recommend doing that probably starting around module four module five if not sooner um so you want to make sure you're not trying to do all this on you know august 7th and this paper's due august 8th right uh, obviously that's not a good way to go um but if you get a jump start on the mcgur book uh then you can you're in a position where you can put all this together um with the primary sources the textbook readings um the uh uh, the lectures, uh, the McGurr book, 
uh, and put yourself in a position starting on August 4th, uh, the day that it's the final, the final paper, module seven, beginning of the module seven module, uh, the final paper module. So starting then you can hit the ground running with actually writing your paper and you can finish it, you know, and do a good job uh, in hey, hopefully do a good job in an efficient manner. That's that's the idea. Um, as far as a more detailed discussion of this paper, I'm going to save that for my final paper instructions video. I haven't recorded this yet, but I'm going to record that hopefully in the next couple of weeks and post that to module seven, along with some essay writing tips uh, as well. Uh, and so I'm going to go over in great detail um, how to approach the McGurr textbook. Um, basically how to read it, how to sort of take notes and, and think about it, uh, and how to approach this specific paper. But again, it's going to be a five-page paper, um, and you're going to either explain the rise of conservatism. Uh, it's an analytical essay, so it's not like a report. You're not going to do research, but it's an analytical essay um, where you're going to either explain the rise of conservatism in the late 20th century, uh, which is a significant topic, again, at McGurr and at Module 6, or you're going to uh, write an essay uh, understanding on understanding American populism. Uh, and the idea here is that McGurr's book deals with conservative populists in the late 20th century and then and how they spearheaded and, and sort of undergirded the conservative movement of the late, the conservative ascendancy um, uh, in response to the upheavals of the 60s uh, that really took off in like the 60s and 1970s and culminated with the election of Ronald Reagan in 1980 um, and continued to certainly have a lot of influence after that and into the end of the 21st century. <laughs> um, so anyway, McGurr talks about conservative uh, pop and focuses on conservative populace in Orange County in Southern California in the latter part of the, the 20th century. Um, this conservative grassroots movement uh, that kind of spearheaded the broader conservative ascendancy. So if you choose the understanding of American populism um, option, then you're going to compare those populists basically to the late 19th century populist movement and other populist movements in American history. So you're going to kind of, uh, if you choose the uh, explaining the rise of conservatism option, you're going to kind of stick to the late 20th century. Um, if you're uh, going to pick, if you decide to pick the understanding American populism option, then that's going to be a little bit broader in terms of scope, um, uh, but you know maybe easier in, in some other uh, in some other respects as well. So anyway, I'm going to talk about that in great detail. Uh, in my final papers uh, instructions video posted uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks here. So stay tuned for that. And again, I'll post that to module seven. Uh, but that paper is a big deal. You want to have, I, I would recommend, here's what I would do. I would recommend reading through uh, the next, next few days, reading through the final papers instruction sheet. Um, so you kind of know uh, what the, the final product is supposed to be. You have an eye on what you have to do to finish this course. Um, and get a good grade in this course. Obviously, that's 34% of your grade, even though it's due six weeks from now, like that's really important. You want to start thinking about it. Okay. So what else do I want to talk about? Um, yeah, let me talk about course time commitment. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting potentially other stuff though. Hmm. So, okay, uh, yeah, so again, these are the modules. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know what, actually, let me uh, let me go back to the community forum. Uh, or sorry, Let me go back to the syllabus and talk about a couple other things, including the community forum. And then I'll talk about course time commitment. And then that will be it for this video. Okay. So in the latter part of the syllabus... Um, I would recommend you read through these course policies. So email, I, I will periodically send important information uh, slash materials to your ASU email address. Please make sure that your account is open and active. Yeah, the main thing I'm going to send to your email address is announcements. Um, are you? Wait, let me rephrase that. You should have it set up where announcements, um, and I think it automatically does this if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, but make, make sure you're receiving um, my announcements that I post to our course canvas page. Uh, make sure you're receiving those via email. 
um, that's a better way to go than, you know, whenever you just happen to be in the course canvas page and you run into the announcement, like that's not a good way to go. You want to have those delivered to your ASU email and check the, check the ASU email on a regular basis uh, is what I would highly recommend. Okay, so what do you do if you have a question? Well, uh, look under communication. It says, if you have a question for me, look for the answer first. This course is, uses a three before me. Again, this course uses a three before me policy for student to faculty communications. When, question, when questions arise during the course of this class, please remember to check um, these three sources for an answer before contacting me. Course syllabus uh, very well um, could have the answer to your question, right? Announcement in Canvas, um, especially if there's like some kind of mistake with one of the assignments. Um, a lot of times I have like 10 people emailing me. Uh, it's much easier to post an announcement and then everybody checks the announcement. That's a more efficient way uh, for us to, to get everything sort of straightened out. Also the community forum. So the way to access the community forum is on Canvas. So again, I'm uh, if you go under modules, you can see here it says community forum. And this is the community forum, yeah. So the idea here, let me just read this. Uh, it says, if you cannot find an answer to your question, and it is a question of a general nature, such as clarification on an assignment or where to find something in Canvas, for example. Please post your question at the community forum. This forum is designed to display your questions and answers for the benefit of, uh, of all for the benefit of all uh, students in the course. Students can answer, uh, answer each other's questions here too. I will try to post answers to uh, community forum questions within one business day. Um, if your question is specific, however, um, however, if your question is specific to your situation, uh, for example, asking about a grade you received on uh, a, specific, a specific assignment, um, then you should send an email to me directly, right? This policy will help uh, help you get your question answered as quickly as possible. And it also helps prevent me from having to answer similar questions multiple times. Okay. So I'd recommend, uh, you know, again, looking at the syllabus, checking the course canvas page, maybe even checking the community forum. Maybe if you have a question, maybe someone else had or a problem, maybe somebody else is having that same issue and they posted to the community forum an hour ago or something. So check on that. Um, you guys can read the com uh, computer requirements on your own. Um, let's see, let me talk about academic integrity. Uh, I'll let you read through this on your own, but um, basically plagiarism is not allowed in this class. Uh, you guys are responsible for knowing. I, I, okay, so basically the class is adhering, my class is adhering to the ASU student academic integrity, integrity policy. And I've listed that a link to that policy. So if you have questions like please take a look at that. Um, everything that that says, like that's relevant to my, that that fits in the context of this, um, that's operative uh, in this class. Okay. <clears throat> um, the university defines plagiarism as, quote, the use of another's words, ideas, materials, or work from the internet or another source without properly acknowledging and documenting the source, end quote. And stipulates that, quote, students are responsible for knowing the rules governing the use of another's work and materials and for acknowledging and documenting the source appropriately, end quote. The university's academic integrity policy also stipulates that, quote, claiming credit for submitting work done by another or through the unauthorized use of technology is not allowed. And then I go on to say, basically, if uh, you're found to have plagiarized, um, you'll receive a score of zero in the assignment, most likely. Uh, you may also receive an automatic failing grade in the class. And your instance of uh, academic dishonesty could be displayed in your academic record. So it's a serious deal, right? Uh, this is a, a serious deal. This would mostly apply, by the way, to the final essay. So don't plagiarize the final essay. Don't just get information off the internet. <laughs> um, you could probably find a summary of McGurr's book. All right, I know you can. Uh, a summary of the McGurr book, for example, uh, on the internet. Uh, you might be tempted to copy and paste that uh, into your essay. If you're tempted to do that, you want to um, not give into that temptation. So basically, when you submit an assignment to Canvas, um, just, you know, FYI, when you submit a, an assignment to Canvas, it automatically goes through um, the site turnitin.com. And um, basically turnitin.com is a plagiarism detection site. So, uh, uh, and then it gives instructors a link to, so turnitin.com basically scours the entire internet and 
um, lets me, the instructor, know which parts of your uh, paper are identical or are oddly similar to other things that have been posted on, on the internet uh, at different days and in different places and at different times. So you don't, you don't want to do that. Um, that's, again, that's an automatic fail. Please don't plagiarize. And that brings me to the subject of chat GPT. Chat GPT are basically AI-assisted technologies. Um, so what I'm about to say is not you know, I, I'm not like anti, I'm not a Luddite, I'm not totally anti-technology, and I'm not necessarily against AI-assisted writing, um, you know, uh, once and for all. Um, you know, I think probably AI-assisted AI writing is going to be a way people write in, in the future. Uh, and so we're still kind of working out what's acceptable and what's not acceptable as a society and in different institutions. Obviously, this is a big deal in a place like a university, right? Uh, especially in a humanities or social science class where essay writing is, is a part of what you're a uh, big part of what we do, right? On what we uh, test you guys on. Um, so... <laughs> um, Again, I'm not totally against it, but for the purpose of this class, AI-assisted writing, just to be clear, AI-assisted writing is not allowed. Use of AI-assisted writing is, is not allowed. It's considered plagiarism. Uh, by the way, Turnitin.com has developed uh, plagiarism detection software that uh, – that can also apparently detect um, the use of AI generated writing. Um, uh, so just a, a heads up on that. Um, I would also say that it's not really going to help you for this assignment. What I am, so really what AI, uh, what's something like ChatGPT, and I've like played around with it a, a little bit, um, what it's good for <clears throat> is for doing a Wikipedia style report, right? So, you know, if if the assignment was like, tell me about, you know, the history of money in the past 2000 years, how is like how my, what, you know, different societies have used different monetary systems and how have those systems evolved over time um, and give me that in five pages like ChatGPT could do like a decent job of that. Um, just like Wikipedia, um, you could find out that information on Wikipedia. 2000 years ago, the Romans did this and 1500, like, but it's really general. Um, it's really general. And a lot of times, uh, it's not accurate as well. Um, because I, I won't get into the reasons for that, but, uh, I, I wouldn't count on it, uh, being accurate. But if you take a look at what I'm asking you to do for this assignment, um, for the most part, Chan GPT wouldn't, even if it was allowed, like that wouldn't really, I think, help you a whole lot. Um, so what I'm asking you to do is really specific. So analyze, you know, for example, the rise of American conservatism, um, considering my lecture videos, ChatGPT doesn't know what I said in, in my lecture videos, I, I, I don't think, right? Um, so you want to demonstrate knowledge of my lecture videos. You want to demonstrate knowledge of uh, the course textbook as well. Um, demonstrate knowledge of the McGurr book, but not just a general summary of the McGurr book. You want to take out specific things that help explain the conservative ascendancy and the grassroots mobilization aspect of the conservative uh, ascendancy of the late 20th century. And not just that, you want to, uh, you have, I'm making you cite your sources. So, um, McGurr said this on page 79. McGurr talked about this specific organization. This is an example of grassroots mobilization. Um, again, putting that all together, like chat GPT isn't going to do that. Uh, so you have to actually do the work. So, uh, just a heads up on that. Okay, and last thing I wanted to talk about was um, uh, the course time commitment. Uh, how much time is this going to take? Uh, so, guys, this is a six-week course. Um, this is, you know, essentially a 15-week course jammed into 16 weeks. Um, so it's going to be busy. Uh, you're going to have to spend a lot of time on this, almost no matter, you know, who you are. So I want to be just kind of open and honest and transparent about that and make sure people don't have the wrong idea. So I got this off of the ASU website, actually. Um, so this isn't just according to me. This is according to ASU. ASU says that, quote, coursework includes... Um, uh, so ASU says the coursework includes all learning activities, including reading, watching videos, studying, and completing assignments. So th this is what they're saying about um, how much time you need to spend uh, on a certain course. And basically, according to the Arizona Board of Regents, ABOR, um, 
45 hours of coursework um, per credit for college level courses translates to, um, uh, I'm sorry, I've, I, okay, I've, I've exp <laughs> explained this in a confusing way, but uh, here's my point. According to the Arizona Board of Regents, according to the ASU, uh, for one unit, um, for each unit um, of a course that you take, you can expect about 45 hours, at least 45 hours of work. This is a three unit course. So that translates to a three credit course. Um, so that translates to 100, 135 hours, right? So uh, 135 hours uh, uh, is at least according to ASU, what you can expect to spend in this course. Now, if we do the math on that, um, so this is how oh, I actually calculated this for a seven and a half week course, but uh, I'm going to quickly do the math for a six week course. So 135 hours a week for a six week course would be 22 and a half hours per week, right? So uh, 20, so uh, 22 and a half hours per week, that's kind of what ASU is telling you is kind of the what you can expect to spend in a course like this because everything is jammed into six weeks. And now, that being said, uh, do I think that everybody has to spend 22 and a half hours to get an A in this course? No, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's probably the case that for certain people, you're going to be able to spend less time, you know, potentially like 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours a week, maybe less. Um, but you know, there's a lot of factors at play, right? So previous knowledge of U.S. history, uh, analytical skills, you know, verbal skills, how fast of a reader are you when, even when you're reading, you know, fast, are you retaining what you're reading? Um, uh, so a lot of different, you know, factors here, right? Um, so again, it might not take you 22 and a half hours per week to, you know, get a good grade or hopefully an A in this course. It might take you a little bit less than that. What I can pretty much guarantee though, is that, um, you know, it's not gonna take you two hours a week, uh, almost no matter who you are, right? So if you were kind of thinking like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I work full time, I'm gonna fit this in on my lunch breaks, you know, a couple of days a week and, you know, spend two, three, you know, hours a week and just kind of get this done really quickly. Um, I can pretty much guarantee that that's not going to work. In that case, I would actually recommend that you drop the, the class. Um, again, this is six weeks. Um, it's really a 15 week course, you know, jammed into six weeks. Uh, so you want to be clear eyed about that. This is going to be a lot of work. Again, it might not be 22 and a half hours for everybody, but I would expect, you know, at least 10, 15 hours. So I'm giving you multiple chapters to read. I'm giving you a supplementary book to read. You have to complete these primary source reading assignments. Uh, and, and then actually, uh, besides that, actually completing the assignments that are graded right every week, uh, the reading lecture quizzes. Uh, so you can see it's a lot of multiple choice questions. Some of them are going to be confusing. You're going to have to go back in your, your ebook or your hard, hard copy of your textbook and take a, a close, a closer look. Um, and, uh, you're going to have to write out your short answers. Uh, that's going to take some time. Obviously you're gonna have to write this essay, uh, after you read the McGurr book and kind of consider a lot of different things that we've encountered in this course. So there's a lot here. Um, so you want to be, not to kind of intimidate you, but you want to be clear-eyed about how much work and time and energy it's going to take to do well in this course. Uh, you know, by the same token, uh, I think this course is very doable. Um, uh, I don't think you have to be, you know, a history major to get an A in this course. Um, uh, I think especially, you know, I try to set set this up in a way where, um, you know, I think some some instructors would have you do like a timed uh, a timed test or something. I considered that, but I thought, you know what. Um, no, I want you to, you know, take the time to figure out what the right answer is. Um, and I think those that are willing to spend spend the time. Uh, and read through the textbook carefully, read through the primary documents carefully, write their essay carefully. Uh, I think even if you you don't have a lot of experience with history, you're not a, a history major, even if you're not a great writer, um, then uh, I think I still think it's possible to get to do well in this course and, and to get an A. Uh, that's that's sort of the way I've thought about this. Okay, so uh, that's about it for course logistics. Welcome to the course. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. But again, check the course Canvas page and and uh, syllabus and, and stuff like that first. And yeah, I look forward to a great six weeks. Uh, looking forward to uh, 
to uh, uh, seeing you guys, uh, grading your guys' assignments and eventually reading your final essays. And I, I think uh, I think this will be a great class. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Talk to you later.